Hello everybody, welcome into this second day of the Molecular Evolution and Phylogenetics module. I hope you enjoyed the first session and I also hope that you will enjoy this one the same. Today we're going to talk about more in detail about uh, phylogenies. So we're going to talk about traits, phylogenies, evolutionary models and divergence time between sequences. The learning objectives are there. Um, you're not going to become experts at uh, phylogeny, uh, but I hope you will be able to understand better what a phylogenetic, phylogenetic tree is. I hope you will be able to, to talk with specialists uh, a bit more comfortably. And um, I hope that you will gain insight into what an evolutionary model is. Yeah, so that's it for the learning outcomes. Be comfortable in discussing with a colleague about the details involved in running a phylogenetic analysis and be able to prepare a phylogenetic data set to understand uh, what you're going to build your phylogeny uh, on and what's the, 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 the process um, upstream of the phylogenetic inference. <clears throat> okay, so traits, taxa, phylogenetic trees. Let's get started. Um, <clears throat> a phylogeny, whenever we talk about a phylogeny or a phylogenetic tree, we talk about uh, a mathematical object that is a tree, and a tree is a graph. A graph contains um, nodes, uh, also known, known as uh, vertices, and uh, edges connecting the nodes. And the specificity in a tree is that there is no cycle. A cycle is a path uh, from um, one node to another, uh, sorry, a cycle is a path from one node to the same, and a path that is not of uh, length zero, okay? So it's basically a loop. Um, in a tree, it's not possible to go from one uh, node to itself, um, going through different other nodes. In other terms also, in a tree, there is only one uh, path from any node to any other node. Okay, there is only one path. <clears throat> if you had a, a cycle, you would, would be able to have several paths uh, from one um, node to another. Okay, um, a tree is a connex graph. Connex graph means that all uh, nodes are connected. Um, to each other. In other terms, uh, you can travel in the graph using edges from any node to any other node. Okay, it's um, it's a connex um, uh, component. Um, in other terms, there is no one, uh, th there is no um, vertex that would be separate from from the rest of uh, the trees. Or, or there is only one connected component. Maybe during the the lessons or during the questions, I will be able to draw this, uh, draw examples on on the board if necessary to explain this concept of connexity. The edges represent direct evolutionary links, and nodes represent past or present taxa. So <clears throat> taxa can have uh, can be of different nature, but let's start with uh, taxa being species. In this case, um, an edge from one node to another means um, an evolutionary link uh, from one species to another. Uh, meaning that the species uh, that is the descendant node um, came from um, the species that is the ancestor node, from a speciation event. So <clears throat> a, a, a taxon, or the plural is taxa, is a member of a taxonomic representation. So um, it can be a species, it can be a virus strain, it can be a variety if we are studying uh, plants, it can be a subpopulation, etc. Um, taxa are whatever um, is um, on the leaves of your uh, tree. Okay, the leaves are also called terminal nodes, and there are the extant taxa, meaning the taxa that exist uh, currently. Okay, nowadays, let's say. 
that's the taxa for which you will be able to have gotten information traits um, in order to to know where to uh, to plot them in the tree or to to know what value values to associate with these taxa okay um, so on the leaves we have taxa operational taxonomic units and these leaves can be a species um, genes uh, virus strains etc etc okay a trait or a character is any biological feature that can be compared across taxa you want to understand what is the evolutionary pattern between the different taxa and um, you're going to build your phylogeny using data um, numbers okay or, or amino acids or nucleotides and these uh, values uh, that are describing the leaves of your tree these values are called traits or characters these traits can be qualitative um, for instance uh, nucleotides or amino acids a qualitative variable is um, a variable that is not a quantitative variable, um, that's a variable re represented not uh, by numbers, but by the different levels or the different categories of a categorical variable. For instance, if uh, we are talking about um, nucleotides, aligned nucleotides, um, we have an alphabet of uh, four uh, nucleotides. So we can say we are dealing with a qualitative variable with four levels or four categories. If we are talking about amino acids, we have 20 amino acids. Uh, so it's a qualitative variable with uh, 20 categories. Okay. And there is no, in a qualitative variable, there is no idea of an order. You cannot say um, amino acid um, M is bigger than amino acid I or less than amino acid I. Okay, so qualitative, pure qualitative uh, data do not support the idea of an ordering between the different levels. You can also have quantitative data on the leaves of your tree, uh, in which case they can be discrete, semi continuous, or continuous. For instance, um, you can build a phylogeny uh, from the number of repeats of an identified microsatellite that is um, shared amongst all your taxa. And you could calculate, you could um, use the number of microsatellites, uh, the number of repeats of that microsatellite to, to build your phylogeny and to understand uh, what, what are the links the evolutionary links between the different taxa. You can use the frequency of an allele. Uh, remember the paper by Cavalli, Sforza and Edwards I showed you, I showed you in the first uh, lecture. In that lecture, the populations were identified by the frequencies of uh, a gene, of an allele. Okay? The diameter of the skull, etc., etc. And most often, you will build your phylogeny not on a single trait, but on a series of traits. Okay, for instance, the repeats of 100 different microsatellites, uh, in order to enrich your data set and not to build the phylogeny just on one trait. Okay, let's have a short break here, and we'll start again in the next video.